like i was told i'll be good at a desk job young people have so much potential but there is no platform that's giving direction to this potential my dad was like what is this not for profit like you know what is this trust you're starting people just want a sense of belonging from the time that you gain a sense of being in this world you start fearing failure if you don't speak in english what platform do you have today to go and talk there's something here and this can become something Supriya Paul is the co-founder and CEO of Josh Talks. She's someone who exemplifies the founder mindset and there's so much to learn from her, especially how she's giving voice to stories that really need to be heard. We didn't tap into all of that, but so much more right after this. I'm so happy we're doing this. Uh we've spent some time warming up to this conversation so what i call it because we sat and i think the pre chat to this podcast is a podcast was a podcast to, yeah to itself but i'm happy you're doing this because i've genuinely loved seeing how you guys have evolved and what you really stand for but more than anything else it's it's about giving i mean for me it's about giving a voice and then figuring way to lead that voice along i want to ask you about the inception how how did it all start if you had to think of like not just the story but the moment when it was like okay, this is when it kind of came what what was that moment thank you firstly for having me here but uh, you know how everyone says that there is this eureka moment in mm. life and then like the idea came and then everything fell into place and now we're a successful organization i just don't think things work like that uh but it was a series of moments um which i had and which my co-founder shobhit had and it was almost like this level of frustration which was peaking mm. uh as time passed and when that frustration peaked the evolution of josh sort of happened and the frustration was about the fact that young people have so much potential but there is no platform that's giving direction to this potential mm. just because you're from a small town in our country just because you don't speak in english the world is very different for you and the whole naive thought back then was can we create a world which equalizes this mm. and uh, josh of course the word is just as it sounds it's yeah. to drive energy enthusiasm build yeah. up this feeling of you know i want to do well in life yeah. and my background has nothing on me and that's sort of how it came about you use the word frustration i think that's an interesting one to pick up yeah. right um because the more i talk to people who let's say are from a city versus who are not from a mainstream city um, and i come from a small town myself and you talk to someone and it, it's not just a straight a straight a thing it's more about how you kind of focusing on who has access and who doesn't have and as much as you might believe that the digital world has given everybody the access they need it hasn't what for you were the core pieces of that frustration if you had kind of break it down and say these were the primary things and and how has that how the understanding of that frustration evolved over time yeah so um i think the first drivers of frustration were our own personal lives right mm. like i am from delhi i belong to a, a decent family sort of privileged background went to a good school and by good school i mean english medium mm. did well mm. had everything going in terms of you know guaranteed success uh but i still felt extremely confused about what to do in my life yeah. my dad was a big driver of my decision making fed this mindset of becoming a topper you know like getting into srcc which is big in delhi yeah. then get becoming a chartered accountant growing the ranks becoming a partner at a big four and i never questioned it i lived 19 years of my life not questioning this decision and just kind of imbibed it that this is what the world has to offer for me um up until the time that i went into college and realized that i wasn't this person like mm. i was told i i'll be a i'll be good at a desk job and so i said okay maybe a ca is good at a desk job not realizing that i actually like to talk to people i was just told that you know i'm not the type i'm an introvert and similarly like for shobhit i think it was a similar frustration in a different um area of setting he belongs to mandi which is a very small town in himachal pradesh when you're going to kullu and manali you cross that town and he studied in a school where the person who is now or who was his best friend then hmm. is still working at a chai ka thela hmm. or is still selling you know basic stuff amenities at a kirana shop and that guy used to top class so it was just like we are living in these different worlds but there is still like the problems are remaining the same right yeah. one is this tier 1 india who has everything but is still not able to take the right decisions and then there is a tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 india who doesn't even know yeah and how do you kind of bridge this gap um and like you rightly said the world is i think more 
at ends because of the internet now because the internet doesn't exist for people who don't read in english yeah. it's just so new for people who are consuming in regional languages yeah um and that's why we decided that this was a large enough problem to be solved this is something what you just said i'm thinking about it is that when you're growing up you're always told you you always ask that question we're all asked that question ki what do you want to be what do you kya banna hai and and when i was growing up it was like doctor engineer um or mm. commerce if you couldn't do science and if you were like full nithala then you are going towards let's say arts right and so i said okay half my family are doctors half of them are engineers let me pick the one which will take the least amount of time to study and it was engineering and i went towards that and i think back on the fact that what you are is not necessarily what you do in your career hmm. and i feel that's a root of the frustration like i think back on some of the friends when you were mentioning this that you have had from back in kakinada and i would think about you now some of them would want to just do something with music um i had a friend even in school when i went to boarding school who told his father that he wanted to be a fashion designer and he said no you're doing engineering i don't want to my son to be a tailor yeah right um and he eventually never went towards it eventually went to a corporate career it's also i feel the frustration this continues because you never truly sat down and said this is what i want to know about to even know what that is or you mm. try to find out what it is do you feel at some level that's changed that people know okay this is maybe something i want to know more about because little bit of access at least i'll get yeah i think so it's changed for tier one india mm. right i feel like we are a lot more exposed uh, platforms like youtube like instagram have given us a world where we can find uh, areas of interest and then tell deeper and figure out stuff uh, but if you still look at tier 2 india and i'll speak of my experience in the north more because that's where a lot mm. of our work has happened no matter how exposed you are or whatever you're searching for on the internet the first desire is to become an ias officer mm. is to crack the upsc exam mm. right and you look at the number of people who give the exam as opposed to the people who actually clear it uh, it's negligible mm. there are only limited postings and everybody's fighting for that and if you don't get upsc then it's a private job if you don't get private job then it's entrepreneurship mm. and entrepreneurship doesn't exist as a word yeah it's dukan right correct and agar kuch nahi hue to papa dukan khol denge that's sort of the mindset yeah. so we literally <laughs> have to start from scratch to see we have to change fundamentals yeah like you have to stop thinking the way you think and we have to rewire you to think differently mm. which is overwhelming <laughs> and was it overwhelming when you started off because obviously the 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 hypothesis or okay this is the problem to solve is, is spot on right it's one of the i would say one of the biggest problems we face especially considering the number of people we have yeah and the number of people outside of mainstream cities that we have and also number of people who don't speak english as their first language uh, is also that large if you look at your early years how was that period for you um, and it's also about the mindset that you had to kind of push through right? both of you together kind of pushing this ahead and really understanding okay you set out to solve this problem but there is a i mean when you when you choose to solve a large problem you also do get overwhelmed by it quite often so how did you deal with that part so uh, i mean like if i just like think back it's it's all just so overwhelming because it's like a blur right like there was i can still hear like some of the statements that were made again and again like when i told my parents for the first time that this is something that i want to do i don't want to sit for placements um i was in my final year of college like all the big fours had started coming there was an expectation that i'll get a job and i said that i need one year i want to explore this and uh, my dad was like what is this not for profit hmm. like you know what is this trust you're starting agar aap you know if you want to teach Yeah. and the privileged children you can do that outside of work yeah. you can volunteer somewhere so and it's common to hear that again and again and it wasn't just him it was a lot of people because that was sort of like social entrepreneurship didn't really exist like yeah. people didn't want to solve for this section of society they didn't see a business opportunity here so it was more like you're whiling away time so i think a lot of um, this feeling of being overwhelmed came from self doubt mm. um uh, and criticism which was going on again and again and again but uh, slowly and gradually we put the pieces together and found an entry point to start uh, which was physical events we yeah. said that what's there to lose we we are in good campuses we have a college supporting us they would be willing to host an event here we'll call multiple speakers they'll come and share their story it's not a big expense to take and we'll figure it out from there and i still remember the first event that we did was in delhi in air force auditorium dholakwa 
and we had 250 people who came it was a 9 am to 7 pm event and everybody stayed my dad came and he stayed he literally told my mom one day before that you know i'm just going to keep her happy and we leave before lunch hmm. and i saw that he was there at 7 pm and he was still so engaged um, and that's when i really felt like okay there's yeah. something here and this can become something uh, to keep 300 people in a room engaged was a task that we solved for yeah. um and that's i think something that really drove us to go further and if you think back on that specific time what the things that surprised you that okay, these things are like you obviously going in saying i want to keep them engaged through this period but sometimes on one end there are people who question you but it's also the people you do this for they surprise you by showing you what they're getting value from and it might not necessarily be what you planned it to be yeah. um were there those aspects as well early on that kind of came okay one second this is what they want and this is we didn't think this would be something that would interest them were there any of those yeah i think uh, what someone takes back from an experience is so personal that you can't even imagine what the outcome would be right like for us we never thought that we'll become a space where people meet hmm. over a lunch break and start businesses together and that happened at like some of our first few conferences right the whole idea was to come and listen to the speaker on stage but these connections were being formed out of stage uh, where people ended up doing that so that's something that was totally out of our radar when we started uh, the second was we expected that people would start thinking about what to do with their life we didn't expect that there would be an immediate action based on it um and soon after we started doing a couple of conferences and then we started putting our videos out online we got mails from people on immediate action which was you know as drastic as dropping out of a course because they realized that's not their passion to changing a career stream completely to you know having the confidence to go and talk to their senior at work asking for a promotion really strange things started coming together but what was common was that it wasn't a talk anymore it was that i saw something i felt something and i was deeply impacted to take an action this you know when you when you spoke about people coming together to start businesses right it's what we don't often realize is when you allow for dialogue you're allowing for community to come together yeah and that's one of those core i mean for me that's in the core learning of the internet as as a content creator has been the fact that when you're creating you're not just creating for someone to consume you're allowing people to have like to actually see people having conversations as comments and and for you to actually in person and then obviously evolve from there there is also a sense of okay this is what people need people mm. need um, someone to listen to what they have to say someone to understand what they're trying to what they believe in and that's the only way we can all kind of figure a way ahead right because it's that and at which point did community become such a large part of what you were doing because from what i've seen is that the community has actually been a, almost like a foundational yeah. aspect to what you've been able to grow and evolve towards and and how was how was that part of it been yeah so uh, there's actually a word that um, our users use it's called mahol hmm. you know ki hame mahol nahi mila ya we ah. didn't get the environment to do well and if you just create that mahol or environment again and again in different scenarios magic literally happens right that first instance of a mahal was a physical e- event mm. the second instance is now youtube the mm. third instance for us is our english uh, speaking app right where we've not it's not rocket science yeah. we are using the same curriculum that all organizations in the world are using to teach english yeah. the only thing that we've introduced is a feature where people can talk to each other in english mm. so because you're building that human connect and you're practicing every day you're mm. making friends on the app it's driving completion so i think people just want a sense of belonging um and that's essentially why communities exist right and once they have that they are so much more confident to take actions because they just feel like they're a part of something what's there to lose yeah yeah and there's also something which you've you've said and i we spoke about this before we got into this podcast and you've said this out there as well is that and i feel that's such a beautiful insight on especially the way we function as a country is that you are that bade bhaiya yeah. in that sense you've been able to build that el- the elder who you turn to for advice which is not necessarily your parents i think we all mm. I think most of us will agree that we will be turned to our parents for certain things you always have someone else who's older we turn to and i thought that's such a beautiful insight on just what india functions like and what we all need but i i'd love for you to talk about it because i feel that there's a there's a really strong message in that 
Yeah, so um, I mean, it's common, right? Like yeah. you were talking about your experiences, yeah. and yeah. and I think we've all had them at different stages. It's just something that we realized was not a moment; it was a phenomenon. Hmm. Which is that if you speak to someone who's actually, it doesn't even matter whether you're from a larger town or city or a smaller town, but at least we've seen it more in smaller towns and cities in India. And you ask them, what is the attribution of your success? Hmm. and there is always this chacha or a bhaiya or a taya ji who told them to pick up a career choice yeah. you know go to delhi join the tuitions for ias test prep and you'll be able to crack the exam go to kota study for engineering and you know you'll change the face of your house yeah. so there's always almost been like this uh, you know figure like a guiding figure in people's lives and who they've turned to again and again is just i think putting it all together like we we coined this bade bhaiya phenomenon um and we try and use that for everything right because at the end of the day like we are a lecture on stage hmm. for 20 minutes yeah It sounds super boring, right? Yeah. Um, at the first look, but <laughs> yeah. the only way because we all have a visual of what a lecture feels like. Yeah, it feels like school, and like you know, you are in the in the last seat, but but it's not a lecture. Hmm. It's actually a bade bhaiya on stage yeah. who is giving you direction in a way that's relatable. Who's sharing his story or her story, yeah. and just hoping you take something back from it. Also, feel that by doing this, and because. your focus has has strongly been on vernacular um do you feel you also taking away this is a one strong um, stigma right is that if you are not fluent in english and it's something which is innate in all of us yeah you kind of feel like you it's on, not just a lack of confidence you feel like you lack in capability mm. i know that's changed over time but what i want to ask you is that have you seen the fact that the because you have focused your content and focused all the activities you do on this area have you seen that it's it's almost a way for people to evolve from finding confidence without having english as their first spoken language do you feel this is one of the ways to be really pushed ahead because that's where confidence goes right you yeah. you judge yourself you think of confidence like oh one second i won't be able to do this right all those questions come down from the basic sense that i can't communicate in english the way someone else might to feel that changed it has for a certain section um so i would say that for someone who's still super young which is say 16 to 25 and they need to get a job english is a medium to be able to do that mm. um it's almost like a seat on the table right so even when we speak to our users it's not so much jobs also it's about respect that when i go to college and i can't speak in english i feel inferior when i'm in a meeting room and my boss is speaking in english i feel inferior so there are a lot of reasons why people want to learn english and i don't think there's anything taking changing about that yeah. but in the older audiences we've seen this uh, difference come about you know if you don't speak in english what platform do you have today to go and talk hmm. nobody will know True. you exist yeah unless you write about it yourself right through some of the user generated yeah. writing mediums yeah. so just the fact that now someone can come and share their story on a stage and there are other people who are lauding their efforts has created the sense of purpose in a lot of people um and we see that like deep rooted especially down south as well uh, it didn't exist as a medium and you know people are so much more confident giving a talk in their native language 100% Like if you were to do it in Telugu, which you have to, yeah. Like I, I feel it would be so natural, right? Yeah, yeah. I feel the worry also comes, and I and and I partially blame edu- the way we were all. I don't think entirely. Partially also blame the way we were educated for it. Right? Is that I remember learning Hindi in school, hmm. and I remember learning Telugu in school. The way that sounded and the way people normally speak Hindi or Telugu is not the same. like i've not heard anybody say ha hey, at the end of every sentence <laughs> but that is literally every sentence we had yeah. um in the textbooks i eventually learned hindi by watching bollywood hmm. all my hindi was That's learned awesome. with that and with thankfully i had friends who were punjabi when i went to engineering and that's how i learned to speak hindi i just hung around with people who could speak who were speaking hindi all the time and i'm like and while it was had my south indian accent in it and all that stuff it eventually evolved but it's also about like even telugu for me was like how i spoke telugu normally wasn't the shuddha telugu that you normally get so i feel the worry for a lot of people also is that this might be natural to me but will i sound a little too like colloquial thoda local sound aa mm-hmm. jayega it won't sound like pure in that sense at least for me that's been a barrier right like i will do it but okay will it just sound a little 
because you talk at, at home when you talk you talk a little like casual yeah. you know the worry is to be casual english feels a lot more formal yeah but i think uh, like if you look at content that does well on the internet right yeah. it's completely authentic yeah uh, and sometimes when you're in a natural flow of conversation it's much better than anything mm. else right like i did uh, a talk recently and i used the word shiddat Hmm. and people were just like you know messaging me saying did you even do you even know what this means and like uh i fell off the chair when i heard you say this and i'm just like no but if you are in a moment sometimes there's just something that comes to you and you just have to let it flow the way that it it does hmm. it's not a language then it's an emotion hmm. and a way to depict that emotion could be a colloquial language or it could be something that you said in english it yeah. doesn't matter yeah. right i have to ask you this and I, and i'd love to ask entrepreneurs this question is that um because also feel it gives a deep insight to mindset what has been your biggest fear through this process was there something like really like like has driven that fear element in you know, what what is that i don't think it's of the past it's not has been what is my biggest fear even today hmm. is failure right i think from the time that you are you gain a sense of being in this world you start fearing failure Hmm. um and then that's how your conditioning works uh and then when you do something out of the ordinary the pressure is even more high yeah so it's almost like like i've spent a uh, eight years now in jan doing this i spent i've dedicated my 20s to this right so it's going to be like there is always this fear that what if this fails and what are people going to have to say about me yeah. then so we judgment all, we all have that judgment worry yeah right? yeah it is i don't yeah and i'm a punjabi so it's like big like you know <laughs> like it's a conversation with all the aunties but still it's also there's also family right and and i and i don't believe it's as much of what no one means to put that extra fear and pressure on you but there is that societal worry ki you know like and i'm sharing this because it was something which i went through a lot in my early phase is that like you did engineering but now we work in television felt like almost i was like yeah. a person repairing television mm. right which is a totally fair job but that's not what i was doing or the fact that when i was i had a job working as a promoter for a liquor company it was like so you're selling alcohol now yeah. you did, again it was like you did engineering you were doing this it's also mm. because you drive yourself to study something and then you do something else also stops people from doing things they might they can actually do and have an impact with mm. and once you do then you're worried like like worst case char sal ka degree hai you will get a job is is what you end up hearing yeah. all the time but i'm actually hearing more and more young people today saying that i don't want to go that route i want to do something that has impact from today which is great for someone like me to see cuz like i'm 40 and i'm seeing like someone in the early 20s saying that no i don't want to spend that time figuring that safety but i want to go towards giving impact as you've seen all the you know talks that have happened is that something you're seeing as well that people are really focusing on impact early on and not like yeah. saying oh, i will do everything i have to do get that cushion hmm. and then have some impact yeah i think also covid has accelerated this feeling right like i think when uh, people had a lot of time to think hmm. um and for the first time in a long time it was like the world took a pause right yeah um and that feeling made people realize various different things and i think one of the biggest outcomes of that feeling was what am i adding to the world like what value do i add what's my purpose um and then repeating that question to yourself again and again i think has led to this whole passion economy coming out and yeah. and i guess content creation also came out as a result of that yeah. right so many people want to be creators now and spread their message across the world which didn't exist early on so we are seeing that as a trend but again it's limited mm. it's limited to people who have access to people who are you know in common circles having this conversation again and again but for that boy who is you know like whose dad's a security guard mm. right now he's not having this conversation yeah. it's too far off yeah so it's still about is yeah and then next when you think about that boy and I, because you mentioned him it's but you also see aspiration right there's this i feel in this weird mixture today of you can see the aspiration before they, you couldn't even see the aspiration before it wasn't even like a thing that yeah. you, you know you'd have this thing where my my fav- my favorite example was i remember the person who used to cut my hair when i was a kid his father had cut my father's hair mm. you know they were doing that and at some point my question always like i wonder what his son's doing right now yeah and and from what i know the barber shop doesn't exist anymore which means mm. that either the son moved to a city trying to do something else there's been that shift 
And I think of that shift, and I'm, and the more and more young people I speak to, I see that the fact that they want to do more things, and there's this because you're seeing it, it's it's within arm's reach. You are like, how do I get there? Yeah. How do I bring myself to that point? Not just be inspired, but but who's going to kind of, you know, you need someone to push you from this point to that point, and that requires again. I'm coming back to your analogy of the of the the big brother or the or the mm. elder in that sense. You feel in, in 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 an Indian context, you need someone to take you across that, not just inspire you, but to really say, "I'm going to lead you to that point." Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, if you just go back to the an- analogy, right, and we look at it in real terms, and you think of the people who were there for you, yeah. uh, you turn to them at various stages in your life. It wasn't like a one moment where they inspired you and the world didn't look the same. Yeah. It was this constant source of feedback or like a sounding board again and again. कि भैया मैं क्या करूँ या दीदी मैं क्या करूँ and अब मुझे नौकरी चाहिए मेरे को internship चाहिए you know I need to yeah. get like a job yeah. or I need to learn a particular skill or I need to be able to earn money. So there were so many questions. Even if you're going through like a hard time in a personal relationship, this person has been there. Yeah. So it's almost like someone who's holding your hand, taking you from point A to point B. um and that's sort of what our aspiration also really is that that you've seen a talk and you're inspired and now i want to be varun yeah. but that's not enough i'm inspired so now i know i'll take an action but to be able to take that action i still don't know fundamentals which require me to be like varun right yeah. i'm still not good at communication i'm still don't know a skill uh, i may not even know english which is required and that's sort of the journey where we are on now that mm. how do we hold your hand and actually take you to a point where you know in punjabi terms you're settled yeah yeah i think across the board settled is a word yeah, we yeah, all yeah, use yeah yeah it is universal yeah, yeah it was that <laughs> i remember that someone asked me uh, when i was i think i was in my first television job and said that like, uh, all this is fine because i was working in mtv at that point time but when you're going to do something serious like maybe join yeah. a news channel i'm like it's not the same thing that's not settled yeah. but yeah the word settled comes no for all, for everyone that also come, i think the word settled also comes with the fact that people feel like when you are doing something at that age you are also really driving and it's all about work and when i think the settled comes in because people are also expecting you to have some form of balance have some life there as well what's your perspective on on balance in life between work and life and we like to always talk about the word hustle on this podcast because yeah. i have perspectives on hustle um i have perspectives on people who say you should hustle hard 24/7 but i'd love to hear your perspective on 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 balance yeah uh i'll give my perspective on hustle because it ties into my perspective on balance i think when you are young um and you start out you have this energy which is like you can't describe it and you are trying to prove something to the world um and that feeling of wanting to prove yourself is like so consuming that you become a version of yourself that you couldn't even imagine you would be right mm. um and then that starts defining you and in my opinion that's what hustle is right mm. like the ability to just get things done yeah. the ability to be charged up all the time to have singular focus and and i've been there and i've propagated a culture where it should be like that mm. like there is no sleep there is no food you just have to work we are on a mission like let's just get it done mm. and over with but over time i've realized the importance of balance mm. because it's not a five year journey yeah. like when we started out we knew that i mean we're trying to solve for education yeah that's the eventual goal right yeah. and it's a three decade journey and in five years i was in a situation where i had so many medical issues uh there was a phase where for six months i was just in and out of the hospital and and i and to what ex- like yeah. what was it all worth right yeah. in the end if i'm not going to be able to live my dream just because of being on this uh 24 7 clock and that's when i changed my perspective also and and now i talk about it because like i feel like people are still not taking care of themselves mm. it's still about what you need to show the world as opposed to how you feel and what you need to do for yourself yeah. uh, and that's where balance comes in and i'm also inspired by you and your instagram i've started working out it's been yeah. like 3 4 weeks that i'm doing it regularly but yeah so i have this thing i do for all, for a bunch of friends who are entrepreneurs uh, especially those who are younger than me i'm that person who will message them at like 9 in the night saying khana khaya Nice. Um, and I'll and I'll find them a trainer saying no you can't don't have an excuse. Yeah. I've had a, a a friend of mine whose mom came up to me and said thank you for for finding my son a trainer he's working wow. out three days a week because <laughs> I'm like this is you, the only yeah, way going to cross that threshold is that 
I love the fact that you you spoke about your transition from how we looked at hustle to what it is, right? Because that's often what we get wrong about balance. You believe that work life balance means that you work less. but actually when you have balance you can actually work, work more, more. Yeah. you have a lot more energy you get yeah. to do more and you also happier because you have a life as well uh, and, and that like you was it shows at work yeah. yeah you're not drained you're not feeling like you know you're not you're not sitting there because my my picture of us eleven should become i remember there was a time i would sitting and my eyes would be like this thing working um and i had an incident of uh, some time back but one, one my arm froze because i was sitting in an aerator room for so long mm. that the ac blast and i was there for days sleeping oh on the God. thing there that this part almost wasn't moving and my producer said what are you doing and they sent me back and i think back on some of those times and nobody forced me to do it but you believe that if we don't work at that like it's support. not right yeah it's not ethical to not yeah. right like i i like in bombay if mm. this was me 4 years back yeah. or 3 years back i had this thing that if i'm going out of my city then my day should be packed mm and you know how distances can get over here right oh, so no. it would always be like three meetings are not enough if you don't have seven don't go yeah. don't waste that ticket yeah. and and i think i don't know if enough even got done but yeah. there was this rush ki oh i've gone i've met so many people something's going to come out of this yeah. as opposed to doing like two or three meaningful meetings in the day having time to just be by yourself explore a new city and i think that perspective does so much more then just sitting in a cab running from pillar to post not having enough time to spend with the people that you'd like yeah. to meet with uh because by the time so you're done with one meeting you already yeah, think next, about the next one it's already there yeah you haven't met a friend you got haven't got to like even check out the, the the city i feel that's become a lot more today than before the pandemic because hmm. we all got used to scheduling like you know half an hour one hour meetings back to back back to back back to back <laughs> and now suddenly i remember the first time i started to go out for meetings and i had become this person who never left the house hmm. and i would schedule like four five meetings back to back and i would be just running from one yeah. to the other i'm like what am i doing now now i'd do like maybe two at max cuz you can't do it yeah. our cities are not made for us to do four yeah, to five meetings i know it'll take yeah. you years to go from one to the other there's another aspect which which i want to ask you is that you know whenever you're working towards something like what you're trying to solve you'll have many challenges that come across We had to pick one core challenge that you feel was one of the biggest challenges you've had to face through this process. What would that be? Uh, I think building a sustainable business has been one of the biggest challenges because it's something which was super unconventional when we started out. Like, how do you monetize something like a talk, right? Hmm. Um, and then you start looking at mediums like advertising, but then how do you be authentic because you're telling someone's real story? You can't have a logo in the backdrop. So I think figuring out models around monetization has continued to be uh, a consistent challenge mm. which we've overcome. Mm. Um, and the other thing has been that, like now we are moving more towards a like a B two C company, right? People mm. come on the app, they buy their courses, they start learning with us. The user who we reach out to doesn't have the ability to pay. Mm. and it's a user that's disregarded even by advertisers yeah, right it's yeah. the bottom of the pyramid completely so building a sustainable business keeping our demographic at the center of it has been a a consistent challenge yeah. i come from the ad industry right and what you said actually resonated with me because you would always hear people focusing on on a premium audience because you believe they are the ones who will pay yeah but only when you really dig deep you realize that how small that premium audience is and if you even call them premium because it's thing mm. is very like wrong term to use for that for a for a category of audience you realize how small that demographic is and who you're excluding by doing that i still haven't figured out a way to solve that like i've always wondered how is there a solve for that is there a way to bring more people into it but if how many people can actually pay like you said becomes a tough thing that has to be at some point to solve to kind of give access build a sustainable business yeah. because businesses exist to be sustained through making money and it stick to the mission yeah and i also think you know um, like what we've also learned in our journey so far is that people romanticize the concept of uplifting others yeah. right you know like if someone is today at say a 7000 8000 rupee a month job or you know like a 20 30000 rupee household income they're not going to shift to 1 and a half lakh mm. immediately yeah um, and most organizations focus on that that there's going to be this orbital shift which will change the game for everyone 
and if that doesn't happen they start losing interest yeah. but it's not like that right like it's a step by step evolution like you learn one basic fundamental you move 5000 10000 rupee up and then you learn something else and then there is the ability to uh, go ahead so there's not so much focus on skilling as opposed to more focus on job based outcomes yeah. but without having the right kind of skill sets you can't even move that yeah so uh, it's really interesting to solve because it's it's just like when you know that this is going to take so much time and you have a perspective on it yeah. then at the same time you're a startup and you have energy and you want like the world to come to you yeah. overnight it's just like living through two different dimensions on a daily basis yeah. and trying to figure out what to do i mean you try to work between all of those things there's this constant friend we all have which is called self doubt oh my god which is always constantly there's hovering around us yeah. and, and 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 how do you deal with self doubt I don't deal well with self doubt <laughs> like I I don't even know what to say about this because I feel like I have so many uh, phases um and I have and I have such a hard time uh, giving myself a break that I don't know how to get rid of this mm. like uh, you know like I think a lot of people have a lot of ideological answers to mm. this yeah. but it's almost like a daily battle mm. in your head um and and it happens in different stages of the journey also right yeah. like when you've built something from scratch you're so emotionally attached to it and then you have to give it to someone else you have to delegate then you don't know if that person's the right person for the job are you the right person for the job yeah. so it's just like these conflicting emotions on a daily basis but i think i breathe through it and i take one situation at a time and try and figure out what to do with it yeah. but i suck at it <laughs> yeah cuz i don't think there is a solve for self doubt yeah um, you just have to be okay with having like uh, there's this i remember reading somewhere like, you got to keep fear and self doubt and all these things as your friends and you hanging hang around with me you can't you not you're not holding the steering wheel but you you are in you're in the gaadi like you coming along with me and in moving ahead because you can't beat it it's it's yeah. there and it often times even tells you the right things also like you know, it stops you from being you know overconfident stops you from taking the wrong calls like holding you back in that sense but um, when someone says me just like do this you will get it of self doubt never works there there is no cure for it yeah and i also feel like for other things also like i'm this person who needs to be i mean who doesn't need to be but who likes to be pushed against the wall mm. to really like you know do something transformational and that's all self developed pressure and if i didn't have that i don't know who i would be yeah because it's always like my mind telling me i can do more right no. and then people say no that's not how you should live your life but but it is and i think different things work for different people uh i think managing emotions today is something that everybody should learn how to do and i'm struggling but once you're able to do that like you can use all of this in your favor as yeah. well no well, i think managing emotions is one of the core things that we which we are never taught and i and i sometimes think about why have we never taught how to just manage like just even understand our own emotions yeah. why we act of a certain way i feel that everybody needs to be given like one module on like just like how your mind works when you're when you're younger especially now i was teaching my daughter the other day breathing techniques when mm. she was getting really like anxious before a, she was doing a presentation to me and my oh, my nice. wife at school mm. so i was like teaching her breathing technique before and she was calm she said i actually that papa did that and i was like <laughs> nice. um and how old is she just 5 oh wow and mm. uh, it's something i'm like why wasn't i taught this cuz i was that anxious kid mm. getting on stage who wasn't able to talk so would talk faster and i'm like if i knew that then maybe i wouldn't have like run off stage a couple of times when i did run off stage uh, has there ever been a piece of advice you've gotten that has really been like something you've held on to and and helped to kind of push along yeah it was actually like um, so ankur varik who's mm. been there like since the day i started right he's been someone who's who, who was at one of our first josh talks events and he's like sort of been that person i try to um and i think one thing that he he told me early on was that uh, don't be afraid to seek help and i think that changed my perspective on everything uh, because i was this kid who was just like i don't need anyone to help me right you know mm. like i'm going to go through my fair share of struggles in life and nobody's out there to help and i have to just make it on my own and yeah. i used to keep like batting myself down saying that's the only way that life works uh but using that i think when i started reaching out to a lot more people for different things things came together mm. so i think that's the only thing that even like at different phases i keep going back to yeah. that okay do i need to do this alone yeah is there someone else out there who can help me do this yeah. uh and things work better when i do reach out i always like to ask people who have co-founders saying how how is how is that relationship evolved as co-founders 
it's been interesting so we are like polar opposites right um we we also look at different sides of work so and we have extremely different views uh but i think what unites us is the end goal hmm. um and i know it sounds very like ideal ki oh you're only looking at the future and not talking about the present and all of that but we have like we have rules we have rules on who's going to win in an argument whose voice matters more in what situations uh who cares about what deeply and how do you kind of navigate that yeah. but i don't think that i could i would have been able to do this journey alone yeah. um and i speak to a lot of people who are single like for, uh, founders who are running uh, companies on their own and i realize the need that they have oh for God. someone who's a sounding board yeah. like i can't imagine my life without having to go to show with for you know like if there's an issue there's a problem there's anything like that yeah. so i don't think i would do it differently ever there are final few questions which i ask all guests uh, we've started to do this because we think it's it's it will be interesting um, collation at some point when we do it what do you do uh, to take a pause i started working out yeah and i was uh, i started going on walks which is so not me uh because i'm just like who walks yeah. like it's the most it's random the best, no, yeah i know i thought it was the most randomest thing to do uh and i would always be like okay if you're working out you need to go to a gym or you know you need to be in a class or whatever like just walking as a medium of leisure or exercise never existed so i do that now is there a song or any particular it could be an album could be a song could be a genre that you turn to when you want to kind of take that pause is, do you have Yeah, I have an indie playlist on Spotify. Hmm. So I think it's got like a lot of Pratik Kohad and I just listen to that. That's like my soul music. Yeah. yeah. I think at some point we'll do a collation of all of all the songs people have been giving yeah, us. Yeah, and make a list. Those. You should have like yeah, a yeah. list. Yeah, yeah. We started to do that. We're slowly getting some of those tracks and I think we'll yeah. do that. You know, I could keep doing this episode but I'm actually going to wait to do another one because I feel there's so much more we can talk about. No, I love but that. uh before that i'd say thank you for coming on take a pause it's been fabulous to have you on thank you thank for sharing you. everything you shared thank you so much and thank you for the insightful questions i felt like this was a conversation yeah. and not an interrogation <laughs> <laughs>